Good morning, everybody. How you doing today? My name's Andrew. I'm Daniel. I'm Tracy. I'm Matt. Hi, I'm Mimi. I'm Aunt Becky. And we're some of the veggie boys. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to thank you for stopping by. If you're new here, please consider subscribing because we can grow a lot of stuff on the farm, but one thing we can't do is grow this channel without your help. Welcome back, everyone. It's so nice to see you. We are making our way down to the farm market to get started with work. Callie and I are up early. She even brought her own pumpkin from home. I told her there were plenty of pumpkins here, but she still had to bring her pumpkin from home. Come on, Callie, we gotta go set up the farm market. Let's go, let's go. How fast are you? I go fast. We were not the fastest ones here this morning though. It looks like somebody beat us. Matthew went to the auction last night and picked up a few things that we needed. As you all know, we are finished with harvesting cantaloupe and watermelon at the time, so we had to pick up those. And a few varieties of apples that we needed. But uh, now that we are here at the farm market, we can work on getting everything set up. I got started with cleaning and dad came and shouting, so I'm going outside. Oh boy, look at this. We got a side-by-side -side with some pumpkins on it. Do you see the pumpkins, Callie? How about this one? Wow. Look at that one. What do you think of that? <laughs> We've all been working on getting the farm market set up. There is plenty to do every single morning. I know I show you guys us setting up the farm market every day, but that's just because it's something that needs to be done and every morning is a little different, but that's okay. We're expecting people to be picking up a lot more apples. So we've been working on filling up the pallets with those. There's a lot going on up in the farm market right now. Daniel is working on putting a whole bunch of orders together. And while he's been working on that, Matthew also has been working on a really large order that he has to deliver right away this morning. However, since the farm market is all set up, it's a good opportunity to get the animals taken care of, which dad and I are gonna do right now. It's nice and warm inside this tractor when I woke up this morning. Man, it was chilly. You know, personally, I would have liked if it was a little warmer these next upcoming days. However, this cooler weather that's coming out of the north is protecting us from that big hurricane off the coast. If that hurricane came in, well, that would not be good for many reasons, but probably the biggest reason is the amount of rain that it would dump on us. All that rain would definitely put an end to some of our crops, the tomatoes, for example. However, because we have this large mass of cool air hanging over top of us, it's gonna make sure that storm stays off the coast and we should be okay. However, this cooler storm from the north also seems to be bringing rain with it. So we just can't win. Uh, it's just gonna be wet and sloppy. Just got finished with the cattle, and while I was doing that, Dad got the calves all taken care of. Now while I'm here, I'll show you quickly what we got done the other day. Uh, this whole back section and this side of pen, uh, we got completely cleaned out. I don't know if it's just from how wet it was or what the deal was, but it was getting sloppy back in there and we just felt it was a good idea to get it all cleaned. We've been talking recently about how we could upgrade the barn and we do have some building plans in the near future. I don't know necessarily what we're gonna be doing. We still haven't finished talking about it yet and you know, once you're in the talking stage, that's a pretty big deal. But anyway, we're just gonna get the rest of the animals taken care of and then on to the next job. Dad and I are getting baskets loaded on the side-by-side. -side. We're heading out to pick. Well, I got a bigger question. What's with all this mess inside the side-by-side? -side? Callie was running in mud puddles this morning. <laughs> I don't think Callie was driving. I think it was you. She was saying, pop up, go, pop up, go. Well, I guess what are you supposed to do but hit the puddles then? That's exactly what I did. Now, the first thing we are gonna be picking today is red beets. Now, this is not our first, but our second planning. We wanted to come through the second planning and get some of them pulled before they get too large. Since the ground is nice and saturated, picking red beets is not too hard of a job. Uh, the roots are not too deep into the soil and the soil soft enough so that you give them a little tug They pop right out. So we're just trying to make sure we don't pull any that are too too small But this is the size we like Now 
Now, if you've ever raised or harvested red beets before, you'll be familiar with the variety that we're raising. These are called Detroit Reds. Detroit Reds seem to be a very popular beet. I know for us, it's always been a really nice beet. Uh, they do great uh, with canning. Grammy really loves to use them. And the people in the local area agree with Grammy because they love when we have them. But we noticed that the beets did not get near as red as Grammy or the people wanted them. So it was more for Grammy that we started raising these Detroit Reds. And I think it's paying off, that one's split from the moisture, but I think it's paying off in the long run. The beets have looked really, really good and we haven't had any complaints. I don't know, Dad, that looks like a pretty good pile of red beets. Yes, it does. I'll have them cleaned up in no time, though. What are you saying, I need to keep picking? Yep, get back to work. We just got finished with harvesting the red beets and pulling all the tops off. We're gonna take the mediums back first because we don't have enough room for everything. We got five baskets of mediums. The next step for these red beets is just getting them all washed and dried off. All the red beets have now been washed and put onto the dock. We're gonna let them drip dry before we take them into the cooler. We don't really have any big reason for doing that other than we just don't want water all over our cooler floor. Don't want anybody slipping. We need to go and do a little bit more picking and all we know is if we didn't get out of this parking lot soon enough, we would have been parked in, so we gotta get going. We've made it out to the next thing that we're gonna be harvesting, and that is white corn. I don't know what is going on this year. White corn is usually not as popular as it has been, but we have to pick every single day, which is crazy for us. There's your basket. And there we have a full side-by-side -side of white corn. That should make everybody happy because they have been picking up tons of the stuff. Andrew, they haven't been picking up tons. They pick it up by the dozen. Oh, my bad. Sometimes just by the ear, Dad. Maybe by hundreds. Ow! That ear sounded like it was past its prime. It's almost done. <laughs> We had a little bit of white corn that we were unable to sell, but nothing goes to waste here on the farm. The uh, cattle, they are loving it. I was just working my way over to the side by side, but then the girls needed some help inside. The boys had already gone to harvest some beans, but we had a few orders show up with some heavier stuff. So I was just helping to move it. And right when I was getting ready to leave, I noticed we had a hitchhiker on one of the baskets. So we don't need to take him for a ride. So we're just gonna set this basket up here. This praying mantis is just gonna be relaxing. And I'm gonna go back and join the boys with picking beans. I would bring them with me because, you know, that's pretty cool. You know, like a sidekick that's a praying mantis, but I just didn't want them flying off as I was driving. It looks like the boys have got some of the Italian flat beans harvested and some green. Now I wasn't here for the briefing on everything that was gonna be picked, so I don't know if they're getting more, but I definitely know they're gonna be getting some yellow beans, which is what I think they're picking next. This planting of beans that we've been harvesting has looked really, really good. However, with beans, you only have a short period of time where the beans are at perfect maturity. Then they start to get over the hill rather quickly. Thankfully, we got into these beans earlier on. So when they were on the younger side, we started harvesting, which is really saving us. But something to keep in mind and something that we're looking forward to 
is we still have all these beans right here ready to harvest. And right when we're getting ready to finish off those, our next planting should be good to go. That's why it's so important that we plant beans every other week so we can assure ourselves later on that we'll always have plenty to harvest and we'll always have fresh, nice looking beans. to say some of these green beans here just absolutely look phenomenal can you say something is absolutely phenomenal uh yeah you can when your beans look like this oh my word those are some giant beans too that's what we like to see now looking good is half the battle mmm tasting good too now that's important now in our local area beans are very popular but the amount we raise can sometimes be too much when a planting is really nice we have in the past took beans to the auction um in past years it's worked out well for us this year we were getting boxes of beans going for two and a half to three dollars um we weren't getting that uh, they were selling them for that at the auction and when it comes to all the expense it's not worth the time and effort to take all those beans down there so if there are beans that we can't use we usually end up giving them to someone who really appreciates them like the cattle but this is what we got today some beautiful yellow flat and green now you haven't seen much of daniel today that's because he has been out mowing down all the clover the clover that we underseeded into our wheat ground so uh, we don't really look for too big of a harvest in fall. We're gonna benefit more from this clover in spring, but cutting it now really benefits us too. The clover is gonna help out a bunch because one, it adds a lot of nutrients into the ground. So whatever we plant here after our initial harvest next year is really gonna benefit from that. And then the twofold way we benefit from it, I guess is that it's a cover crop. You know, it's gonna protect the ground over the winter. And then the final thing that really benefits us is that we're gonna bale it and we're gonna feed it to the cattle. So those three things uh, really help us to appreciate that underseeding the clover into the wheat only benefits us. Now it does add an extra degree of work um, because we've got to plant it, we've got to bale it. You know, there's a lot of upkeep that goes into taking care of that clover. But I just think the extra nitrogen it adds to the soil, the extra nutrients, that alone would be enough for us to do it. But the other two things, that it's a cover crop and that we can bale it, I mean, that just pushes it over the edge. That's great for us. So with our beans, we do have a little bit of an issue. They do seem to be on the dirtier side, but that's to be expected with the pounding rains that we've received. It pushes the mud and the dirt up onto the beans. So what we're gonna do now is put our beans in the wash tub and we're gonna give them a good rinse. But this also leaves us with risks. As we talked in the last video, rust can occur when the beans are wet. So even after they're harvested, if they're left wet too long, they'll, they'll get a rust on them and it's not good. So uh, we're gonna wash them and put them in uh, these plastic crates here that have holes in, let the air get around them and let them dry before we put them in the cooler. In a really wet year, like what we're dealing with right now, rust can occur on the plant. Thankfully, we haven't seen too much of it, but we still have to be vigilant because it could occur later on. Beans are now all washed. We just gotta let them dry off. And it's perfect time because it is now lunch. So for lunch today, it looks like we're having chicken patties and salad. Tracy, Dad, and I are on our way back. Daniel already brought the tractor back. We gotta pull some sweet corn. Uh, Andrew's helping Lauren with something so he couldn't be out with us. So we grab Tracy. Tracy's gonna drive the tractor for us, so that's exciting. Always good to get the girls out of the farm market for a little bit when we can. We pulled white corn today, uh, but now we're running out of our yellow and white corn, our bicolor. So we're trying to go get some of that pulled before we get on to picking everything else we need to get done today. We got our bin of corn filled. 
Really nice picking out here in this section of the field. Stuff's getting a little, getting to the point where we may not be able to pick it much longer on account of how old it's getting. We may not be able to come pick it till Monday. And by then our next planting of Yo. sweet corn is going to be ready. Yo. So we'll probably want to start picking our new planting. Speaking of the new planting of corn, dad just tossed me in the air. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. How's the next planting of sweet corn, dad? Just about ready. Looks pretty good if you ask me. Woo! That is some sweet corn. Our last planting of cucumbers is finally ready to harvest. It's been a long time coming. As much as it's rained and as much water as we've gotten, I mean, we've gotten almost a year's worth of rain in the last three months, which is ridiculous. So I'm gonna carry a basket while Daniel and dad harvest. Hopefully we got enough cucumbers so that we can get us through the weekend. I think there was a rabbit nibbling. I'm not as seasoned a cameraman as Andrew is. Andrew's able to pick and hold the camera at the same time. I'm not sure quite how he does it, I don't pay attention. But I'm not able to do that, so I'm just carrying the basket for the boys while they pick. On our way back to the farm, we got 11 plum tomatoes and yep. nine. Cucumbers. We can't count, so we got 11, 11 tomatoes and we got nine cucumbers. Jake's sleeping on the job as usual. Hasn't been doing a good job this year, that Jake. Anyway, it only took us about an hour to get all this picked, so doing good. We're gonna get it back, get it washed, and then we'll get it put up in the cooler or out on the porch for the canning tomatoes. These cucumbers are just for our own farm market, but because we don't have a ton of room in the farm market, we're boxing them up so they're easier to store. We're now on to washing tomatoes. We like to run them through the washer this time of the year, especially now with all the rain we're having. Some of them got a lot of water log, and the, water, the washer makes a mark on them so that we know those won't keep. So we'll sort through them and sort them by color. Right here you can see that won't keep. So that's gonna go for the cows. Cows love tomatoes. got finished with the tomatoes and the cucumbers they went on to taking care of the pumpkins I joined up with them a little later on I had some things going on and I showed up actually right when they were finishing up the pumpkins they did get though look beautiful we're back in the farm market and it smells so good What'd you make, Grammy? Salsa? Mm -hmm. And then what are these? Peppers? Yeah, hot cherry peppers. Ooh. And what are you working on now? Apple dumplings. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and then over here we got more sauce. More salsa. Oh my word, oh. Grammy has been busy. Look at all those jars. That was from today. Oh, yeah. Ay, ay, ay. We are now all closed up on the farm. We had a really good day. Got a lot of stuff done. I know for dinner tonight here at the farm, I believe they're having breakfast for dinner. All I heard was eggs, bacon, and grits. Oh eggs bacon and grits hey if you've made it this far into the video do me a big favor don't forget to like the video also we're trying to hit 200k subscribers before the year is over so if you're new here please consider subscribing another big question i've had is why haven't we been eating at the farm i said things weren't going to change too much well i'll tell you why later on but there's good reason i am now home and dinner is all ready to go lauren's got me taken care of good tonight she made hibachi but since it's dinner time, that means this is where we're gonna end the video. I'd like to thank everyone for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye bye